HTTV in association with Absolute Warehouse Services. Thank you for joining us in these unusual times. Uh, we're trying our best to give you some interesting content, and we've got a fantastic guest with us here today. We're delighted uh, to be joined by a real cult hero in town figure, Dean Gorey. Dean, thank you very, very much for taking the time out with your, with your family to speak to us today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> most important thing, first of all, obviously this is a really unique time for everyone. How, how are you? I hope all your family are well. Yeah, everybody's happy and safe. Uh, well, it could be better uh, sitting inside, but uh, uh, it's like the rest of the world. We have to make the best out of it. Is it difficult when you've got family not in the country? And you're in England for the record at the moment, Dean, but it must be extremely difficult when you've got family that are, are so far away at the moment that you must be worried about. The thing is, um, um, I, I've been, I stayed after my career. Uh, when I finished, I stayed in England. So I've been here now 20, 20 years. Um, I took this job in Suriname and uh, my family's still in, in, in Manchester. So I, I, I came two weeks ago, I came back to Manchester and I'm with the family in the house for two weeks now. <laughs> so That's it's good. a good thing. That's good. Yeah. It's good to be with your family at this time, yeah, absolutely. We'll come on to your career now uh, in a little while, Dean, if that's okay. But obviously, the, the big uh, topic to focus on is Huddersfield Town. And, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of fans, myself included, who, who watched you play in a town shirt and really, really enjoyed watching you play in a town shirt for only two seasons. It felt like longer to me. I don't know why, but uh, two mad seasons in the club's recent history. Uh, yeah. I want to talk to you, first of all, about how you ended up at Huddersfield Town. I mean, I've looked through the Ajax team that you were part of uh, before yeah. joining town, some incredible players he played with, then Edwin van der Sar, Yara Lippmanen, Danny Blind, you know, the De Boers. Uh, first, why was it the right time for you to leave Ajax? Um, as in football, you know, you got to deal with managers. And um, wherever another manager comes, different ideas. Mm. So at one point, the manager got changed. Uh, the new manager of Ajax was uh, Jan Wouters. Uh, he was. Uh, he came with his own ideas. Uh, he was a young manager at the time, and he uh, he came with his ideas, and uh, he didn't play me. So, as 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 Huddersfield Town knows as well, um, if I don't play at a club, and and the manager doesn't believe in me, then I need to go as soon as possible because I don't want to waste my career sitting on the bench or um, don't have a part in play. So. That, that happened at Ajax, um, but they still wanted to, uh, I still wanted to, I was at 29 at yep. the time. Yep. Yeah. And I still wanted to have a, a, an adventure in my in my career. I played uh, already 12 years in uh, in Holland, so as a professional. So I wanted to, yeah, go on an adventure abroad. So I went to Spain to check. There was a couple of clubs in Spain who were interested. Uh, went to the clubs, had a chat with the owners and uh, looked around. Um, and the second place, uh, Steve Bruce was on the phone with my agent and he made me come to England. So I said, OK, let's just have a look around. Came, uh, fortunate, I mean, the way uh, Huddersfield Town at that moment in time got me in from Amsterdam, it was with a private jet, uh, limo in front of the, the jet with the limo, uh, uh, Leeds in Bradford uh, uh, Airport, straight to the club with my wife, checking out everything was impressive. The way uh, mm. the way Steve Bruce uh, actually uh, treated me. Um, so we looked around at his. We went to his house, had a meal with him and his wife, showed me around where he lived, uh, told me about English. I, I, to be honest, what you what you said as well, I never heard of Huddersfield Town before. <laughs> I can't imagine we have done in Ajax. We're probably not but, big news in Amsterdam, no? No, but I played with um, King Klatsi, Georgie King Klatsi. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so me and Georgie were in the same situation. He didn't play, I didn't play. And and I said to him, uh, have you heard of Huddersfield Town? And he said to me, yeah, 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 yeah. This is in uh, England because he played for Man City at the, yeah. you know, yeah. before yeah. he came to Ajax. And he said, it's a nice club. They got a nice stadium. And uh, I think you should have a go and have a look because... Because I didn't know it, I, I thought, yeah, I'm not going because I don't know it. But because he told me, go and have a look. And, and also because of Steve Bruce, obviously. Obviously, he's a big name in football. So you Steve probably, Bruce... You've probably, you probably just made Georgie King Cladsey a very popular figure in Huddersfield now, Dean, and by mistake there. So yeah. he'll be remembered now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's, yeah, because he said go. And, and so I went. And, 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 uh, and the way he got, I got treated 
um, you know, the players, Clyde Wynott was already there, Ken Moncao was there. Yes. So they were talking yes. to me in the hotel, they were saying, you know, it's, it's, it would be good if you come here, you know, if the club will go up, it's, uh, they they investing in good players like you and blah, 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 the whole day. I, I was sold in the dream of <laughs> Huddersfield Town going to places, you know. Um, so, so my feeling at that moment in time, um, made the decision. It sounds like Bruce had a big role to play in all that as well. Obviously, he's, he's had a fantastic career as a, as a player and as a manager, still managing at the highest level. Uh, what was Steve like to work with day to day? Because he it, it didn't have a long time at Huddersfield Town in the grand scheme of things. He moved around quite a bit at that point. But are you surprised he's had such a, a tremendous managerial career on your experience with him? No, I'm not surprised because he's a good manager. He's a, he's a very good man manager. He, uh, he, he makes you feel um, feel good. That's why he, I, I came because he made me feel like I have to make this uh, decision to come to England. Um, the mm-hmm. way he treated me, and he knows how to treat players. Obviously, he knows how to put teams together as well. So I'm not surprised that he was successful. He's successful in his career as a manager because you could see that in, in the beginning of his career, really. No, good. No, good. You've mentioned a few of the names of your teammates, like Ken Moncow, Clyde Vineyard. I, I've been lucky enough to speak to a lot of these guys in my career as in the media team at the club, and you think of Clyde and what a character he is, you know. But you look through the squad and a, a real eclectic mix of characters, you know, Marcus Stewart, George Donis, Kenny yeah. Irons, even Zico was there at one point. I mean, the, it's a real yeah. league of nations, really. How how was the changing room? How How different was it to what you'd experienced before at the likes of Ajax? So big difference. I mean, mm. such a huge difference. Ajax is a, is a big club, beautiful ch- um, stadium, beautiful changing room, big f- fan base. If you come abroad, everybody's looking up to you. Uh, the, 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 uh, you can't prepare, uh, compare it with Huddersfield Town that yeah. nobody yeah. had heard of. And also when you come to Huddersfield, everybody loves Huddersfield in Huddersfield. Mm. <laughs> you know, as soon as you go out of side of Huddersfield, they say, "Who are you?" And uh, and 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 that that's a big difference. And then you come in the changing room, and and the fun we had with all the players together is such a great bunch of lads. It was so much fun uh, because everybody comes from different backgrounds. You know, like you said, Clyde, and you got George Donis, you got Zico from Thailand, you, you got um, what's his name, Kevin Kevin Gray. Big guy at the back. He had uh, what's the right back called again? Steve, Steve Jenkins, Jenkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from Wales. You know, it's uh, no be- beautiful. Uh, Kenny Irons from Liverpool, the scouser. Yeah, yeah. You, you can never forget him, of course. You know, uh, Scott Sellers. You know, it's you no, know, it's, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful bunch of lads. Yeah, and it's funny yeah. when you say Huddersfield, Dean, you still sound like someone from Yorkshire saying Huddersfield as well. I can still spot that glint of an accent in there, so that's good to hear. Um, in terms of not just the characters, but in terms of what you were actually doing day to day as well, was that a bit of a culture shock for you? Because it, it wasn't too long before you came to England that famously Arsene Wenger came to England and, and modernised a lot of the methods, a lot of the you know the nutrition, the training, you know how the teams played. How uh, Not only the culture, but how different was it day to day? Was training vastly different for you? Did anything take you by surprise? Yeah, totally different. It was was a, I mean, Steve Bruce was was a good manager and a, a good sessions, good training, but um, it it was still way different than what I was used to. You know, the seriousness of approaching games. You know, the the food we had as well. We had a lot of fish and chips uh, <laughs> in, in on the bus after the game. You know, those sort of things have never happened before, of course, in my career in in Europe. But um, yeah. Uh, it was a culture shock. It, it, it's changed a lot since then, but it was, uh, yeah. and the drinking, oh my days. <laughs> never seen the drinking in my career of players was just unbelievable. <laughs> uh, I can imagine. Uh, in the name. Um, you, you mentioned the, 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 the fellows who were, had come from a similar background to you, Ken Moncow and Clyde Vinard in particular, but have you managed to keep in touch with anyone from that changing room? I know football's quite a transient game. You, you've had a, a really interesting career since. Have you managed to stay in touch with anyone in particular? Yeah, you, you meet each other here and there, you know, and I was, um, uh, my son was, uh, I've got three boys, three sons, mm-hmm. and the young one played for, at Man City, and Scott Sellers was the academy manager. At Met City, so uh, and that's why I see him again. You know, you talk to each other, and and uh, so you keep contact in that way. 
uh, only when you see each other or have something to do with each other. Clyde Weinert is just he's, he's going to stay a friend, you know. Once in a while, he gives you a call and uh, shouts and on the, over the phone with his things or and and be loud, you know, as everybody knows how he is. Um, so there's always good fun with him. And Ken Monka, um don't see him a lot, but sometimes he could, all of a sudden uh, we meet each other in in places. And the rest of the boys really um, no. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's one more player. What's his name? At the back, <laughs> left back, centre back. Came uh, from Craig Armstrong. Craig. Craig Armstrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Armstrong. Yeah, I've met him a few times as well. He's a uh, he play, he works for the FA. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. 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 You, you obviously had a big impact, and your first season at the club was as close as Huddersfield Town got to the Premier League until we did reach the Premier League a few years ago. But uh, you made an immediate impact, made your debut at home to Norwich, scored in the next game, a 2-2 draw at Notts County. Uh, having been through the training and the fish and chips and everything, was the football what you expected? Because there's a lot made of the, the physicality of what we now know as the Skybet Championship. But it must have been different, again, to, to the kind of football you've been playing at Ajax, where you must have been dominating every week. Yeah, of, of course. But, but not only that, it was... Uh, the culture shock was that um, you, the ball was not played on the floor. The ball was played through the air. And my game is obviously, you need, I need to get it, the ball into my feet. So it was uh, it was quite difficult. But the way we played, to be honest, the way Steve Bruce made us play, we done very well at keeping the ball, keeping possession. But there's times in the game when I was like, you know, this game's gone past me and I never touched the ball in midfield, you know? And I've never happened before in in in, uh, in my career before. And I, I second what you say. I think the football we played in that period was the best I'd seen to that point as a Huddersfield Town fan. It was passing football through the thirds, and it were, it's probably the opposition that we're referring to there in terms of the ball flying over your head all the time. You know, it must have been different. Um, highlights from that season. I mean, it ended in disappointment, obviously, and we'll come on to perhaps why that was in a second. Uh, for me as a fan, I always remember Kenny Irons scoring at Chelsea when we won 1-0 uh, against the likes of Tor Andre Flo. What are your highlights from, from that season at Huddersfield Town, Dean? Yeah, that was my highlight, really, beating Chelsea in, uh, at Stamford Bridge. And we won the goal of uh, Kenny Irons, of course. But a great team effort. And, um, you know, th- these are the things you, you, don't, you don't forget. Um, uh, and being so close to going up as well. Town fans will tell you that the the key point in that season was the sale of Marcus Stewart to Ipswich Town. Obviously, Marcus was flying. He's another person we keep in touch with at the club, now in coaching. But um, it was a bit felt like a big moment from a from a fan's perspective. Uh, do you think that it was as simple as that, Dean? As far as you are concerned, was it losing the top goal scorer was just too big a hurdle to overcome in the end? I, I think there's, there's more to that as well. Um, every, everybody knows that um, Huddersfield Town at that moment was we had a small group of top players. Mm. And so not only selling Marcus Stewart, but also not getting quality in the team that gives us that little bit of push to go to the next stage. Um, because I got injured. and um, There were a few the, injuries at that point, weren't there, Dean, as well? Yeah. It wasn't just you. Yeah. So I got injured. Uh, there's a, there was a few injuries, and straight away um, there was no backup. And and when and when you when you're in a team that if you want to go for promotion, you need to have a bigger squad with quality in the squad. And and this, this, but this when they sold Marcus Stewart, that was for me also. Yeah, I, I knew that could be a big problem because he was so important to us. There was almost like a hangover into the next season as well. Obviously, Steve's still in charge. Uh, it kind of carried on. I think it was one win in 19 games to start that game before Steve left. I mean, fr- from your perspective, what changed? Because some of the personnel were drastically different. You know, we still had some good players in there, but uh, was it simply the, the case of, of quality outside the starting eleven again? Do you think it's just that or anything more? Yeah, there was quality as well, but also the motivation and the feeling what, what we had before all together, you know, the togetherness and, you know, we wanted to go for that um, a little bit higher. But the, the feeling we had is that there wasn't something, there was no not a healthy environment with uh, Steve Bruce and the, the the top of the the owners at the time <clears throat> that felt down. We felt it in the group as well. <clears throat> so there wasn't a, a healthy environment to be in, and you know you needed to be healthy for for a team to uh, to do well to go up. And and that was the second season. It was like 
we were all over the place. It wasn't really one. one it wasn't one group anymore. We had a little boost. I think it was January, February the next year, and that's when Andy Booth arrived back at the club. And uh, we just talked about Booth. Obviously, he still works at the club now in an ambassadorial role. But it was his second spell at Huddersfield Town. As an outsider, someone who'd come from outside Huddersfield, did you have a feeling for how much Booth meant to the club and its fans when he when he walked back through the door? Because again, no shame in this. I suspect he isn't a player he knew particularly well before he rejoined the club. No, I, I didn't know him. Um, the only thing I knew from what people told me so when he just come in I see a person he can't run I think he's, what what kind of is this a footballer you know when you look at this the way he, he runs on, on the training field but this guy was unbelievably good um, to his, the, the way he controlled the ball in the, in the in the air how good he was and, and his character as well in the team he was a um, good influence on, on the whole team and um, that met, made it Andy Booth special to me yeah yeah. for all the trouble we had that season it came down to the last day and and it was home to Birmingham City you might try to block this from your memory Dean but it was home to Birmingham City and it uh, you look back on it now and what an incredible sequence of events it took to relegate you guys in Huddersfield Town that year you know we we had to not win but also there were three teams Stockport, Portsmouth and Crystal Palace that had to get results and for everything to kind of go wrong on that day just seems so improbable, but it must have been one of the low points of your career, Dean, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've never seen, I've never experienced it before. You know, one season you're, you're fighting for promotion and the next season you're fighting against relegation. It's such a, a big difference in, 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 in two years, which is uh, yeah something I actually wanted to block out of my system. I blocked it. <laughs> For all that, and as much as it ended on disappointment, we'll come on to what you did next. I sense you've still got a really good feeling about your time at Huddersfield. It doesn't feel like you regret the move at all. I certainly know the fans don't regret you coming, but how do you look back on that time? You know, uh, it's my f- first experience in England, and I love England so much. It's unbelievable. People tell me, why England? It's just the feeling I had when I first walked in uh, the team in the country and, and experienced English football. And it was still the old style English football. It was like, you know, but we were different because we played a different way. We, we played well, but the most teams were like kick and rush what we used to. And uh, that made it so special. But the whole lifestyle and uh, what, what's around uh, the fans, how people treat you in football was was beautiful. And and that's why I'm still, after 20 years, I'm still based in, in England. So. For me, that that uh, nobody can take away that Huddersfield was the first place I came and I fell in love with uh, with the football in, in England. And it obviously, it isn't something you just feel now when you look back on it with hindsight because you chose to stay in England at that point as well, moved to Barnsley in the summer of 2001. Uh, and then you've worked extensively in, in Britain, also a spell in Scotland with the national team, uh, worked in back in, in Holland as a manager as well. I think the bit that probably most town fans might not realise is you were actually working in a capacity for Reading when we beat them in the playoff final in 2017. You, is that correct? You were working in recruitment at that point at Reading? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, I was, I was at Reading, but I was like cheering, like, come on, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's funny how it football works out, isn't it? It's funny how football yeah. works it was such a weird ch- because it was we, we we were writing history at Reading as well the way we you know we came with Yapstam and it was close with the board there and everything uh, you know we had and and then my team Huddersfield in the final it was just like how can you imagine that you know um, but I was so happy for Huddersfield like you know it's it was unfortunate for us with Yapstam but um, I was so happy for Huddersfield that finally you know, they got in the in the prem, you know. When you look at look back at your, your playing days, Dean, how much have you taken from the managers you played under going into your coaching career? Is is there anything that you even now and football moves on so quickly, but do you look back at some of the things that Steve did, even if it's just how he dealt with you as a person, and take that into your coaching career? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, from every manager uh, I have learned, every manager I played with or uh, coached, uh, played under. I learned something good or something bad. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would do something that I've done. Uh, if Steve Bruce did something, I think, yeah, that I there's some certain things I use, especially the man management side of it. 
And with other managers, I think uh, the way they treated things, I'm saying, yeah, that's what I've learned never to do. <laughs> I'm not going to call names or anything because yeah, I got to respect the people. But uh, from every manager, I've learned something and I put it in my own uh, style as a coach. Yeah, and obviously, it's important to say you are coaching now. So um, you're in your, your second spell in charge of a national team, the Suriname national team. I've looked, uh, I'm not a, an aficionado on, on that national team in particular myself, but you look at the results and you've, you've done some, you've achieved some real firsts with the nation that you must be really proud of. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Suriname is a small country in South America, uh, probably nobody heard of in the world. But everybody can, can knows the players that are, have their roots from Suriname, because I give you all the names and then everybody in football will know the names, but they don't know that they were born or have parents from Suriname. You know, if you, if you talk about uh, Ruth Hullet, Rijkaard, Seedorf, Hasselbank, um, Weinhardt, Monkau, Gore, <laughs> Nigel de Jong, Ryan Babel, uh, Wijnaldum, Virgil van Dijk, all, you know, Suriname players. That's some list. That is some list, by the way. Yeah, yeah and there's no one uh, from the players uh, ever played for, uh, who play on a high level, ever played for Suriname, ever. Because the Suriname players who play for Suriname have always been players, local players, where, uh, there's no professional league in Suriname. There's uh, it's just amateur football. Um, so so I had to go in Suriname and coach these amateurs uh, in, in a professional way. That's actually what I've done. I said I'm going to do that for two years, and uh, I'm doing it now for a year and eight months. And in this time, I um, we 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 won uh, our. First time we qualified for the Gold Cup in yeah. history with amateurs, which is um, is incredible. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And, and the second thing is, not only that we qualified um, for the Gold Cup for the first time in history with amateurs, but now from now on I can use players from Suriname descent mm -hmm. to play for Suriname. Uh, I was going to say I was going to ask you if that's the goal because. Close to home now, and I'm, I'll come on to your, your sons in a second if that's okay. But uh, I believe Kenji plays for Curacao, and we yeah. have a player, Janino Bakuna, who, who's a, a favourite amongst many town fans right now, who's a national international teammate of him. And is that yeah. the next step for Suriname that you have to try and entice some of the the likes of Kenji for uh, for your national team to come and play for the national team to raise that bar? Yeah. So before before I went to Suriname, it wasn't possible. Um, but now, oh, there's my dog. <laughs> but, now, <laughs> but now, yeah, go on, go on, quick run. Um, it, it wasn't possible before um, when you got a Dutch passport and you, you, weren't, you weren't allowed, so the Suriname didn't allow you to play for Suriname if you have a Dutch passport. And we all obviously have Dutch passports. Um, but now, uh, the law changed. We have a sport passport, and we say, okay, now uh, they allow us the uh, foreign, not foreign, um, Suriname players with who live in Europe uh, can play for Suriname. And now it's going to be same as Curaçao. It's going to be a very, very, very interesting team, and I mean very interesting. <laughs> it's exciting times <laughs> for you and the nation, though. Absolutely, that sounds great. That sounds great. Yes. yes. Um, I mentioned Kenji. Obviously, you said you're a proud father of three sons, all being involved in football to different levels at some places. Am I correct in saying Kenji's playing in Portugal at the moment? Because he is yes. someone that has played against town for, I believe, Swansea in particular in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he played, you know, in the, in the cup final uh, with the 21s, he, he played against uh, town. It was right. a good final, actually. Yeah, I was there. I was there, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, semi. No, it was the final, wasn't it? Or semi final? I believe it was the final. Again, you know, when you talk about blocking games. Yes. Out, you lose that one's being kind of pushed to the side. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he did play. Yeah, it was the, probably yeah, the standout yeah. player on the day. Yeah, but Kenji. That's why you know Kenji was ten years at Man United from the old academy uh, before he went to Swansea and then moved up to. Obviously, now he's in Portugal and Nacional. They got relegated last season, and now they're top of the league to go back in uh, in the top league. So, and he's doing very well. You know, um, the middle one is not really a footballer, but he is, uh, he's doing okay. He still, lives in, he still lives in Manchester. He's got his music career. 
And then the young one, he's a talent as well. He played at Man City for a while, got released. And now he's um, he's looking at going to a League Two team. He's 15. So we'll look, see how that goes. It must be exciting for you as well. I, I know, obviously, you had a fantastic playing career yourself, but there must be a different feeling seeing your sons go down their own path, uh, particularly in football, must be a, a proud feeling for you. Yeah, very proud. And uh, especially because Scurisau is also... Um, qualified for the gold, for the Gold Cup, mm. and, and now it's going to be interesting. It's going to be Suriname Curacao mm. at one point. Uh, so it'd be you interesting. Still to... all over again, Dean. You can't, <laughs> you can't split loyalties, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife says, "As listen, I told my wife already. You're not. You're just for your husband, not for your son." Through through all your your story, kind of adventures you've been on in football, and, and the, including the current one, I feel like you've kept an eye on town through all of this. Obviously, you're very aware of what we did in, in, in terms of getting to the Premier League and stuff. Uh, tough season at the moment, which is not massively surprising. Obviously, a lot of teams have this when they get relegated from the Premier League, but it's great to hear, Dean, that you've still got such a soft spot for the for the for not just the club, but for the fans in particular as well. I'm sure they'll appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's great that Andy Boot, you know, um, invited me a few times to the club as well to come, that to keep to keep my heart warm as well, because that's special. And uh, the way the trend, the fans treated me always has been special and it will always stay warm in my heart. That's good to hear. Well, I think it's good for everyone who's saying that you'll always be welcome back at Huddersfield Town, Dean. It's a, an open invitation. Obviously, you've got, you've got quite a lot of travelling on your hands at the moment, but... I certainly know the fans. They'll be delighted to hear from you today and they'll be delighted to have you back at any point in Huddersfield. So thank you for uh, taking the time to, to join us, Dean. And, uh, and best of luck. You've probably got a few new fans for, for Suriname now off the back of this. Oh, they're brilliant. Make sure you follow it because it's got to be special. We will do.